Welcome back to another episode of GL Rustic Design. Today we're going to be building a 8 foot long by roughly 36 inch wide farmhouse kitchen table with breadboard ends on each side. So here you see me uh, running each piece of board through the planer to get it to a certain um, a certain width or a certain thickness of the board uh, so that all my boards line up and then the next step in the process is I use my joiner to take away the curved edge of each piece of wood I only show a few pieces just to keep the video um, pretty short uh, but I run each side through uh, so that all so that all the all the pieces of wood butt up against each other uh, nice and smooth and perfectly this was one of those investments that I had that I wish I would have got years ago instead of just recently uh, so the next step in the process is um, I take the four um, two by tens that I cut at roughly 78 inches long and I drill two inch pocket holes in um, three boards the pocket holes are generally about 10 inches apart um, you can find uh, the pocket hole machine at Lowe's or on Amazon uh, eBay or at your uh, local hardware store so like I said, uh, we're going to drill uh, one pocket hole about 10 inches apart in uh, three three out of the four boards. The one on the end, obviously, you don't need it connected to anything. Um, and then you'll drill two pocket holes on the end of each board to, to eventually connect the breadboard ends. And here, here's one of those steps you can also, as you're putting the boards together before you put the pocket holes um, make sure that uh, all the joints are nice and neat before you before you drill the pocket holes if you have a joiner and then so the next step is to um, I used clamps to hold uh, to hold all the boards flat against each other and then we'll just attach a few pocket holes um, <clears throat> as we uh, go down the line and also I just want to take a minute to say that if you are a new listener a new watcher uh, please like and subscribe to my page um, we have a, we have a lot of stuff going on this year um, I just ordered a rocking chair template so I'll have a video on it um, whenever I get to the point of um, getting it in and making my first rocking chair um, I'll have a swing chair coming up um, still would like to do a entertainment center it'd be a very lengthy video um, also in later in the year we have a new shop that is going to be built um, so I'll, I'll make sure to try to video as much as that as I can um, but for the meantime we're gonna stick with this you know starter shop uh, so the, the next step in the line after you get all your pocket holes drilled together is you want to do your breadboard ends um, on on each side, uh, I usually cut these roughly an inch or two longer than the width of the breadboard in and come back or the width of the table itself after I get the four uh, two by ten stuck together. Uh, the breadboard ends are also two by tens. Um, I take a pen, um, put it up, butt it up against it, line one side up and then draw a line on the other side. And that's how I know where to cut um, to make everything nice and square on the end. Um, and then I'll uh, grab a clamp, uh, clamp one side, um, and then start on one side with the pocket holes, put a few in, um, and then as I go across the board, I line up um, to make sure, if I have to pull it up or pull it down, um, to make sure that that board um, is flush with the breadboard in, just to keep from sanding uh, later on in the process. And then on the other side, um, this was some, this was something new that I'd started um, with with this table, seeing if I liked it better than my other process. Usually, I just cut the boards how how the length out that I wanted them, um, and then trim off any kind of small edge. But here, um, I actually cut it about an inch longer than what I needed, inch or two, um, and then um, 
clamped down a uh, 2x4 that was marked with a square uh, just to give my end um, I used a um, saw a circular saw to cut off the edge uh, to make sure everything was nice and flushed I'll probably go back to my other method um, th there's a little bit more sanding involved with this but um, it either either, either way uh, you can you can work it out but uh, the next picture is um, the table finished after I flipped it over um, I applied a classic gray stain for Minwax you can see how all the joints um, are nice and square together um, so going into the the next step is the base of the table um, however wide your table is I usually go four inches in so two inches on each side um, and that's how I figure out um, how wide I need the base uh, so if this one was 36 inches I, I usually cut the I'd, I'd make the base 32 inches wide um, and then you kind of work um, from the inside out um, so here uh, I have I'm using a one by four um, which you'll see that will be connected to the um, the long width of the base um, I think the, the a, a typical kitchen table height is 30 inches so if you and once you start subtracting your top at an inch and a half um, and then all the width I think the um, the long piece uh, eventually came out around somewhere 18 inches or so um, but I clamp those together and I take four uh, three inch screws um, and I attach um, each one by four dead center it um, so these one by fours will be the length of the two by fours that you'll cut at an angle um, so they won't they'll be a little bit less than 32 um, there'll be somewhere around give or take 30 inches um, it's another one of those I lined up with a pin and cut just to make sure it was accurate um, but also here, um, make sure that you that you use a square. Um, once you put one one three inch screw in, uh, just to make sure everything lined up nice. Um, and then here, uh, this was the cut piece that I had mentioned. Um, cut it at thirty two inches, and then cut the corners off at forty five degrees. Uh, and then I'll take a two inch screw, drill some pilot holes first. Um, I'll put a two inch screw. Um, two two inch screws in these and then I'll grab the piece that I cut at 32 inches um, and I put put two more pilot holes and then put two three inch screws in these just to kind of make sure that all stays together and, um, and then I'll come back with the uh, the the final bottom legs which I cut at three inches uh, these can be however if you want to you know you can cut it wider than these or um, and cut it shorter or you know however it, it's not it's not going to affect the design in either way um, but you'll see here in just a minute um, after I pop in these two three inch screws <clears throat> uh, I'm now drilling the, the, the pilot holes for the bottom two pieces um, clamp those in um, pop in two three inch screws in each one of them And then that's one side um, that's that's done. You have to do flip it around and do the same thing with the other side. Um, so once again, drill two two pilot holes. Uh, screw in two two inch screws uh, to that piece, um, and then grab the piece that's thirty two inches long. Uh, these are uh, both these pieces were two by fours. Um, you could you could here you could make the table. Uh, you know, if you wanted the bases a little bit wider, use two by sixes or even two by eights. You know, just however however thick you wanted it. Um, same process: two three-inch screws here, um, and then for the um, for the angle supports, I think these came right around 13 inches, um, just to kind of make. Um, I just marked a put a little mark in the center, and then just kept cutting them down to 45 degrees. Um, so anyway, so here. I take two I take a, a two inch screw and pop it in each corner and then I put wood I come back and put wood filler in these at the end um, and then let it set for a few hours and then come back and sand it down um, said so I'd, I'd cut all my stock first 
and then and then come back and start attaching everything um, in the next little short video you'll see um, all these um, the previous one I had done um, it has wood, wood filler already in it um, and you can kind of see how it how it all looks when it's together and that's each side of the actual kitchen table and then just make sure you sand those down um, and then it's ready for paint or stain um, and then when you start working on the actual support of um, the table uh, you, this can you can go more in if you need to or more out um, I, I try to leave about about eight inches on um, each each side uh, so that someone could sit on the, the on the two ends I also made two chairs and two benches to go along with these um, but I cut the two by four I cut three two by fours for this drilled um, two pocket holes in each end um, and attached those to the to lay down the, the table base that we just made and then attach those six screws onto here And then I will flip this over and attach uh, those three boards to the other side of the base. Which this was, this was pretty tricky. One one person I was I was trying to keep those pocket holes from coming out, um, in which they didn't. Uh, so those each two by fours, the one in the middle, um, I lined it up in the middle, and then the two on the outside, I just came in a few inches. Um, you can go in farther. You can put it on the outside. That's kind of it's, it's it's not going to mess up. It's not it's not going to alter the design any. Um, but the one in the middle needs to be dead dead set in the middle uh, for when you do the cross when you, for the the next step is when you do the cross braces. Um, but here I just do the same thing as I did on the other side. Take six pocket holes, um, two in each two by four. Um, attach those then you have your top three boards um, that's going to be your main support for the table that you'll eventually screw uh, your pop screws through these to attach the tabletop and then you'll take um, the last two by four that so you have four two by fours um, that you'll cut at however whatever the distance that you need um, flip the flip the table down and this one I put on uh, you, you can put on the the bottom 2 by 4 that you cut at 32 or the one that you cut at an angle um, <clears throat> but those have they have two pocket holes on each side as well just make sure it's dead center um, with the one that's in the middle uh, and then when you attach those uh, this is what you'll come back and do um, the support braces with and then when you when you start doing the support braces, um, so pretty much what I done is I, I um, took a took a tape measure and a pen, and then um, marked off uh, where my center point was on the bottom two by four, and then um, just came in a few inches. I think I done four inches to each side, <clears throat> um, just to. Uh, just uh, ha have have the um, the support braces, and then so I'll cut. I just um, took took the number that I needed, um, and then drew a line uh, of where I needed to cut the support braces at, and then went to my miter saw, cut that angle, um, and then I'll come back and use four three inch screws um, two on the top two on the bottom and that, that that'll hold uh, the support brace in
all right so now that i have um both of my pieces cut <clears throat> i will come back to the base of the table um and add those support braces this will keep uh your table from rocking from side to side especially when it, when it has such a heavy top on it um so what i do here is i'll put put a support piece on um and then put me two little two little marks of where i need um that piece to go uh you want to you want to make this dead center on the two by four um just so you don't have any screws showing um uh, and i drill drill me two pilot holes uh, of where i need those screws to be at uh put one in <clears throat> and then i'll attach uh i'll attach one side of the support of the support bracket um, so there's also made of two by fours if you wanted to do these at a two by sixes um, two by eights you know however thick you want the table you could also do the same concept if you wanted to do a four by four post um, I've also done one of those tables in the past but here uh, since since I'm uh, since I'm already at the bottom uh, I'm going ahead and attach the other side as well same same concept um, you know two screws in the in the in the bottom. And then I'll flip it up and then uh, center up the uh, support beams again. Make sure everything's nice and flush and even and plumb. And um, and then tack in uh, two more screws here. Um, but pretty much after, after this step is done, you you know, you have your own kitchen table built. Um, I, ho I hope that you all like my, like my video and uh, there'll, be, there'll be much more plenty to come. The next, um, I'll, I'll I'll also show a few pictures of the of the table after it was fully stained. Um, I added a coat of uh, polyurethane, two coats of polyurethane um, over the top. Um, I just didn't show it in the video. Just, you know, try, try to keep it short. But uh, thank you again, um, and have a good day.